Following our decision, our government's decision yesterday around a curfew from 6pm to 6am in Alice Springs in the CBD, I'm in Alice Springs today to catch up with stakeholders but to meet with also the people of Alice Springs to have conversations with the people of Alice Springs. I'm here also, as I said, to talk to the stakeholders because the decision yesterday was made quickly. It was based on sound legal advice, but it gives me the opportunity to, today to meet with a range of people in Alice Springs to have the conversation, to talk to them about what the curfew means for them in Alice Springs uh, and our vision and our direction for our government. I will also take the opportunity to thank the police commissioner to thank all of the agencies, the Northern Territory Government agencies, who had a decision about two o'clock yesterday, but were able to get the curfew in place by 6 p.m. last night. Amazing work by our really top level public servants in Alice Springs. From my reports and my discussions with the Commissioner of Police, it was a quiet night for young people in Alice Springs, and that's what Alice Springs people want to see but great to be in Alice Springs. Lovely to have the opportunity to talk to people in Alice Springs over the next few days and hear from them about the curfew in Alice. Thank you, Chief Minister. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, so obviously the emergency situation was declared by the Minister of Police yesterday. Um, it stretches from Anzac Hill behind me down to the gap and to the riverbed to the left in the Todd River to the Stewart Highway. That allows us to operate under the Emergency Management Act to exercise some powers to control movement and basically unlawful conduct in the CBD district where we've seen events occur over the last month um, that need some more attention. And basically the main objective is to suppress that and make sure that sort of offending does not occur. Um, what it is, is needs to temper it with some discretion and common sense. So whilst there's a curfew in place and a curfew can be controlled in any of that geographical location, it doesn't stop people coming into the CBD. So if you're a young person um, coming into the CBD to work, um, you can still do that. You'll be engaged with either a police officer or an authorised officer, which could be a Department of Education representative or a Territory Families representative, to basically establish the lawful purpose for being in the CBD uh, or in that prescribed area. So that's what's really important to understand. If you're a family and you've got young kids coming to have dinner in the CBD, you can still do that. You can go about your lawful business. It's about the unlawful conduct and the crimes that we're trying to control and put those measures in place under the provisions of the Emergency Management Act. Um, I'm, I've said earlier, um, I'm really inspired with the leadership of the Aranda people and the local um, traditional owners stepping into the space and create a narrative to engage with young people and everyone that comes to Alice Springs to understand that what behaviours are acceptable and respect the culture and the land on which we stand today. Um, it's incredibly important that this isn't just a policing issue, it's not just an enforcement issue. Um, the fact that the curfew exists um, doesn't mean that we're going to start locking up kids. Um, the objective is to keep kids out of the criminal justice system relating to a curfew. But if they do commit violent crime, they'll be arrested and taken to the court where they can answer to a judge and go through the justice system. And we're working incredibly close with the Children's Commissioner as well, so we keep her informed about what we're doing. And, and she's got obviously a big stakeholder group to talk to as well. That's incredibly important. Um, as the Chief said, last night was a pretty good night for Alice Springs. Um, we only arrested around 14 people across a range of offending from domestic violence, which consumes us um, incredibly still and it's very important to try and address these issues attached to domestic violence, which are wide ranging as well. Um, you'll see an additional 60 police arrive into Alice Springs today. Um, throughout the day, um, we'll have the pallies, the police auxiliary liquor inspectors return to Alice Springs. Uh, they will be on the bottle shops, um, looking at controls around the sale of alcohol to continue to re reduce alcohol related harm. And they will also be on premise. I'm going to make sure that people who are subjected to a banned drinkers register order are not consuming alcohol and that will drive down the associated crime types such as domestic violence. Incredibly important. So there's a lot of work to do and what I need is a real collegiate approach and we're seeing that now across all the government agencies and even our national partners but the community. We need to come together and look at solutions and work together to work through the youth issues and the problems we're facing in Alice Springs and what the longer term solutions are. Thank you. Questions?
Chief Minister, um, now that an emergency uh, declaration or emergency situation has been mm. declared, uh, and you're using that to, to justify the curfew, mm. uh, but can you clarify exactly you know, what um, specific legal powers being used here and, and which acts you're relying on, or which section to um, uh, undertake this curfew? Yes, so we're under the under the curfew. We're um, under it's under the Emergency Management Act, um, 18 Section 2, Section 18 2. So um, obviously there, is, there have been ongoing issues in Alice Springs. There's issues in Central Australia around uh, inappropriate behaviour, around crime, as the Commissioner says, high levels of domestic and family violence. Um, our government has worked hard every single day to address those issues in Central Australia. Um, we have long-term uh, long solutions in place, but we continue to have work with police, have police in place in Alice Springs to address those issues. We have territory families. The issues around crime, uh, the uh, anti-social behaviour, inappropriate behaviours in Central Australia are complicated issues. Uh, and as a government, we've constantly, constantly had to focus on those to address those issues. The, the incidents that we saw over the last day or so, was the, that was truly the final straw for this community, which was why we acted decisively to bring in the curfew. But again, the curfew isn't the solution to everything in Alice Springs. We will have to continue to make sure our non-government uh, non organisations do the work that's required of them. Uh, we will have to continue to make sure education, health, uh, territory families continue to do work on the ground, that the police continue to do the work. The curfew is but one measure. There will continue to be a range of complex issues in Alice Springs that we as a government and, um, and our NGOs will have to continue to address in Alice Springs. This is not just, this is no, there has never been a silver bullet in Alice Springs. There is no magic wand that you can wave in Alice Springs to sort these solutions, these issues. I've said that before and I'll say it again, that's not their role. We have a, an outstanding police force in the Northern Territory. We've undertaken a review of the police uh, in the Northern Territory as well. I can assure Territorians that there will be additional money in the budget, in the next Territory budget, to continue to and increase the resourcing for police in the Northern Territory. If you're pulling 58 officers out of the top end, are you not leaving that part of the Territory exposed? Because I'll pass to the Commissioner because that's an operational question for police. Yeah, thanks Matt. Um, so that's obviously a decision that, that I make along with the team and it's a, a risk we uh, examine and accept. Um, so it doesn't take away frontline capability for the capital city. Um, it does uh, basically call to action some detectives and other units to put on a uniform and come down and assist us. So, you know, it's a measure we have to act in Alice Springs and, you know, part of my job and our team's job is to look at new ideas and be flexible in our resource deployment. We do have a lot of police here. We're pretty, um, we've got a lot of police in the Territory for our population, um, but it's like the Chief said, it's about focusing on the preventative actions to reduce the need for law enforcement and reducing incarceration rates. But at right now, Alice Springs needs support and they need to feel safe and they need the crime levels basically addressed and dealt with, and that's what we're gonna do. You'll see some really sharp action from police, some really high visibility engagement. Police Commissioner. Um, yeah, well, there's a range of tactical options available to police, and one of them is tactical disengagement as well. If it's unsafe for us to be there, we usually get out of the way. But, you know, we've got a range of options, including lethal force options to protect life. Um, and that's uh, a matter for each police officer to consider um, as they attend jobs. And they're very well trained to assess that. And it is a very dangerous job. Um, policing is a very dangerous job. And they were put at threat um, when they attended that job at Hidden Valley. There was uh, numerous people there, over 150 people, lots of weapons, axes, machetes, knives. Um, and you know, the, the police were concerned and they dealt with it very professionally and handled it very well. 
and took three of the uh, main perpetrators into custody as a result. There, there will be elements of the tactical response group in Alice Springs. No, no, I would not say that. Um, so, I'm, and the commission has been very clear around that. Um, it has been very difficult to recruit to Pallies, and I've said that. If you are a person in Alice Springs and you're looking for a really good job, put up your hand and become a Pally in Alice Springs. So it was really difficult to recruit, recruit to Pallies. Um, so what uh, the Commissioner did, and this was a, a decision based on information from those conversations with, Pat, with the Pallies, was to be able to provide a career pathway. So to be able to go from a, a Pally to a fully-fledged constable. Uh, that also had benefits because we know the pallies don't work on a Monday and a Tuesday in Alice Springs. They don't work till 3 p.m. So it was about um, a sensible decision around being able to use pallies in a, in a different role, have them uh, working on the on the beat basically on those days. Um, but at all times, the, there was still um, pallies, a, a number of pallies, and that range. I saw the figures at times from seven, eight pallies that were available to be on bottle shops across Central Australia, so um, across Alice Springs. So there has always continued to be uh, monitoring of bottle shops in Alice Springs. Chief Minister, can you explain exactly what happens when a child is taken home or to a safe place and they don't want to stay there and they leave? What, what happens then? How does this actually work? So, um, so if a young person is taken home, so there will be the Oreos, the Yorits, there will be um, you know, Territory family staff that will be involved. So through our co-responder model, uh, they will be taken home. If they do not want to stay there, um, then there are, safe, there are safe places for that child to go to. And um, so that's the work then. If that child does not want to be there, they go to um, Saltbush or one of our um, um, our places where and then what happens be. if they leave from there? They don't want to stay there. They don't have to stay there. Well, then uh, that, if that child is in the CBD, um, then there can be uh, an intervention by police. So, um, I'll pass the permission. Um, there were a number of engagements last night, but the, the, obviously the powers are fought under a curfew won't utilise. And I'll go back to that point. This is about we need to go through an education and communication phase as well and just inform the community of the purposes of what the curfew exists for and that they can still operate lawfully in town. But we haven't had to use any provisions of force or removal powers at all. Um, obviously, the, the Declaration in Emergency Management Act also complements, complements the um, Care and Protection of Children Act. And that's why we've got the uh, Department of Education and Territory Families helping us in that endeavour. And like I said, it's about community safety. It's about making a difference. It's about making sure young people don't engage in conduct that's criminal or violent or harming the community. And as of last night, with the, the 23 additional officers we had on the ground um, and the youth officers still working until at least 4 a.m., it made an incredible difference. So we'll continue that. We're flexible in our modelling. Um, we're mindful of displacement. So if it does appear that there's another area of concern within Alice Springs, we can deploy resources um, not just in the declared area, but anywhere in Alice Springs we need to, to have a presence. What are the legal implications of this? If a child refuses to be collected in the CBD, are you going to arrest and charge them? Uh, what happens if they, they don't want to be collected and taken um, somewhere else? It is an offence not to obey a direction under the Act. Um, it's not our preferred course of action. Um, there are other ways, usually just through conversation, we can convince a child. When, when we talk about you know children who leave, um, it doesn't happen that often. Uh, where most children want to get a lift home and they want to go somewhere safe. And once we separate some kids from ringleaders, um, you know, they, they welcome that and actually go back home. And sometimes home might not be the best place for them. So we need to find another safe place. And that's the work that Territory Families have been helping us, the police force down here, with the co-responder model. And it's actually had a bit of an impact. Have you made any further arrests following So, so going to the 16-year-old girl who was pretty badly assaulted a number of weeks ago, um, we know who the offenders are and the investigation is underway and there will be some progress on that. Obviously the victim had to receive medical attention and we've recently gained a statement of complaint from her. Um, so those inquiries are underway but we can expect some arrests in relation to that. Um, on top of the five arrests and associated with the Todd Tavern and Hidden Valley camp, 
uh, the detectives have been working hard in collecting identification evidence and corroborating evidence that will fit the brief and you can expect more arrests in relation to that possibly as early as today. Um, look, you'd have to probably ask the police minister around that, so I'm not aware of that request. But um, one of the... Oh, look, um, I'd have to check on that. As I said, I get thousands, literally thousands of letters that come to me. But to say that, um, one of the, again, it's around resourcing of police, and our, our government's committed to making sure that we see more boots on the ground, more vans on the road, so we're committed to having more police across the Northern Territory. Um, we've got the police review that'll be coming out, but absolutely committed to making sure that there are more police across the Northern Territory. Yeah, so we have, we obviously have Territory family staff, we work with the NGOs, we have people on the ground that act absolutely work with traditional owners, work with the community around solutions. Um, I'm always looking for solutions around the issues that we see in Central Australia. So uh, yeah, absolutely happy to hear any solutions around Central Australia because I truly don't hear many solutions around the issues that we have in Central Australia. But yes, we have, um, that's why we have staff in Central Australia. All our government agencies have outstanding staff in Central Australia. I'm sure that they engage with families and people across the length and the breadth of um, Alice Springs and the uh, central uh, Alice Springs region. Chief Minister, can, can you explain why you've chosen to target young people with this particular intervention? It'd be fair to say that it's not just young people who are responsible for serious crimes in Alice Springs. Um, what, and even in the incident that we saw on Tuesday, it was uh, adults that were involved in that as well. Why is it just young people being targeted with this curfew? So the, our greatest concern was young people. We saw the 18-year-old that passed away, and that's why you know, it wasn't just the incident that we saw um, on Tuesday. It has been a number of incidents, the 16-year-old that we heard about and the 18-year-old that passed away. So it ha our focus has been on young people, but um, you know, the curfew can be extended to be uh, for adults as well. But it is around keeping people safe. It, you know, I know people, some people may see it as a punitive measure, but at the heart of this is making sure that we get young people back on the pathway of a safe and happy and successful life. So it is about making sure that young people are home, uh, that they are being well cared for, that they are getting up and going to school next day, that they're on a pathway to work. So this is all about uh, coming in and making sure that we're turning around the lives of some of our young people in Central Australia that are enticed into the CBD because of all the thrills and spills that go with all of that, rather than being at home, in bed, getting up and going to school. So if you're opposed to that, or you think that we haven't done the right thing as a government around that, I'm more than happy to stand here and defend our government's decision around a curfew. Absolutely. 14 days of giving young people a chance to have a, a really good think about their behaviour and get their families also thinking about their responsibilities. Yes, I will. Yes, I was highly concerned. Um, obviously, I heard on the afternoon, um, I also spoke to the police commissioner, but I heard from people on the ground. I heard lots of people ringing, had conversations around uh, the issues that were unfolding. So 
highly, highly concerned around that. Um, yes, um, it's, it is hard to recruit police at times, uh, but you know, we have a really good police force, a great, um, a great police force that people want to belong to. Um, the, the feedback I've had from police as well is that they're really pleased to have those additional powers around the curfew, uh, being able to um, have people removed from the CBD area. So yes, you know, it's decisions like that that, that give police that confidence uh, or people that confidence to, to want to be part of the police force. But we have a real an exceptional police force in the Northern Territory um, that is very diverse and has very, uh, very complex issues that they have to manage every day. But the issues at uh, Hidden Valley were absolutely shocking. We all, I think we can all agree on that. Chief Minister, we've seen some significant calls from several federal politicians based in the Northern Territory. The first from Jacinta Numpajimpa Price, that Prime Minister Anthony Albanese should return to Alice Springs, not the Northern Territory, but Alice Springs specifically. I'm interested in your thoughts on that. And additionally, that uh, federal member for Lingiari and your fellow Labor Party member, Marion Scrimgeour, calling for a national cabinet of all states and territories, along with the Prime Minister, to come together to discuss uh, the youth affairs and uh, antisocial behaviour. What do you make of both of those proposals? So first of all, um, I just literally had um, National Cabinet in Darwin. So we had Anthony Albanese, and I think of all the Prime Ministers, he probably has been to the Territory the most. I think it's something like nine times while he's been Prime Minister. So um, yes, and um, you know, the last time Anthony Albanese was in Darwin, he was very, very good to the Northern Territory, nearly six billion dollars of funding commitment to the Northern Territory. I don't think I, I could ever, you know, could have asked for any more than that. So fantastic to have had Anthony Albanese in the Northern Territory, but also all, all the federal ministers as well. Um, but you know, I'm open to any discussions because this issue isn't just an issue for the Northern Territory. I know the spotlight has been on Alice Springs. Alice Springs is an iconic town. Everybody in Australia knows Alice Springs, uh, but people don't necessarily know the same stories. The same issues are probably happening or are happening in, in Port Hedley in Roeburn, in Broome, in Cairns, in, in central Queensland. These issues around young people uh, are not just issues for us in the Northern Territory. They are issues for a whole variety of reasons and some of those are around uh, families and alcoholism, around dysfunctional families, around families that are struggling, around poverty. So yeah, I'm more than happy to have broad discussions with other ministers. We do get the opportunity as ministers and as the chief minister to meet, our, meet with our colleagues. So people like Nari Akit, the minister for families, gets the opportunities to meet uh, with their colleagues. But you know, I am happy to hear and that it isn't just the focus in Alice Springs. We hear about Alice Springs. It's in the news probably more than others, but it is an issue that I know all of North Australia is facing. Yeah, 100%. Um, those issues were, I think, historic issues, but that's why we have an ICAC. We were the Labor government that bought in the ICAC. Uh, this is the opportunity for the ICAC to be able to provide a report. I'm sure there will be uh, recommendations from that report that will come out. Um, we've also got the coronial that occurred in Alice Springs. We'll have recommendations from that. So I know the Commissioner of Police will take those recommendations very seriously, as will our government, and will. Um, implement any of those recommendations. So, and just Chief Minister, yeah. do you concede that uh, removing Pallies was a mistake now? Can you just be up front with the people of Alice Springs yeah. about yeah, no, that? I'll let Michael have a go because I've answered that a couple of times. Yeah, thank you. Look, I think um, we have to accept and be flexible on our approach and what the demands of the community are. Um, you know, we go back to, and it was raised earlier, recruitment and attrition is incredibly challenging in law enforcement at the moment. and. The challenges that are broadcast across Australia, New Zealand and the world does make police recruitment incredibly challenging. It is a very hard job. Um, so we need to do everything we can to keep our people. Uh, the pallies, we've got 75 pally positions in the police force. I've only got 41 people occupying that position. Um, I made it really clear that I'll listen to understand the work first when I, take on, when I took on this role. They made it really clear that they want to be constables and we need to give them progression and pathways for success. And if we don't, they leave. And that goes against the attrition. I want to repurpose, and it's really efficient. We've only got really four days of alcohol trading here. And there is a responsibility for industry and licensees and licensing a government department to step in the, in the, in the space to help police. 
So we need to think about different ways of delivering um, effective public safety options whilst increasing repurposing and making constables which are more effective for community safety and we've got really high crime rates and having 33 additional cops in the field across the territory is a really beneficial for the community so I stand by my decision but also listen to the community and if we need to repurpose them bring them back to Alice Springs for this very important time yes we will and we're doing that and we have done it um, I will send them back at some time to complete their training um, and become constables and watch them graduate in June. Um, no, um, and you've got some good informants, Matt. Um, yeah, the, um, no. So look, they they've got different remits. It's exactly like the Australian Defence Force. Like we've we've got a great relationship with the Defence Force. But you know what they come and help us in times of cyclone, fire and flood. Um, they've got other priorities and that's been really relevant in the strategic white paper. So if they want to help us, they do come and help us and we're, um, you know, we've got a big reliance on defence. They occupy the territory a lot. Um, the Northern Territory Police are more than capable of delivering public safety services to the, to the community and we'll prove that. Great, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you.